Welcome to Best Kept Secrets Travel, episode six. My name's Morgan. And I'm Will. And on today's episode, we're going to talk about bad transport experiences and what we learn from them and the best kept secrets, tips and tricks to avoid our mistakes. <laughs> Roll the intro. Best friends and that's for life who stay traveling. I'm talking worldwide, 65 countries between the two. Every moment is so unbelievable. Sharing the best kept secrets about the trips and mistakes they made that they can't forget. So tell me if you're ready for a time to remember as they gear up for the next adventure. Yeah. Woo. Best kept secrets travel. Before we get into the episode and the first story, can I just remind you to like, subscribe, follow on whatever you're watching or listening to us on right now, as long as it's safe to do so, and sit back, enjoy, and help us plant those trees. Let's go. Our first story today is all about taxis. Taxis? In I've Thailand. I've never been in a taxi. Thailand before. and actually a few other countries out there. Stereotypically, don't want to hate on anyone. Actually, Asian countries, I've had similar experience in Indonesia before as well. Mm-hmm. And is using basically what we're going to describe as a tea towel. Can you expand on this, Morgan? No. <laughs> yes, you can. So, for example, Morgan and I experienced it when we actually had our 10 hours in Bangkok together it's in our layover when trip. we're en route to Sydney. Was when you get in some of these taxis, they have what we're calling a tea towel over their, um, their pay meter. Mm-hmm. Their taxi meter. So instead of you visually seeing the price go up, sadly, because you're a tourist, quite often we've had really bad experiences where the price is sort of tenfold what it really is. Yeah. So if you call them out on this right at the beginning and you just say, oh, can I see the pay meter going up? They will. They will do it. Or before well, you get in, yeah, I think the you best agree the price. Agree the price before you get in. I think for a lot of these places, just the best thing to do. Even though quite often they they may say no, we only do meter, and you can't do that, which is fair enough. You may have to take them at their word, but if they say that, make sure you're seeing the meter and yes. tell them you want to see it. Yes, and an other another key tip for taxis is to actually make sure to look at their IDs. Oh, massive point. Make massive sure point. it's a licensed cab and check that the person in that little ID photo is the same person <laughs> that's sitting in the and car be, be and driving And be willing to you. ask it as well. Yeah. So certain countries, actually, they're, because they're... I don't want to pick on countries, but they're unbelievably honest. So I actually, feel like you are. So one of the countries I noticed how prominent they were in showing me their ID and allowing me to read it before I even got in was when I landed in Cusco to meet you. Really? When I left the airport with these two other English guys I met on the plane and I just said, are you guys going to the centre of town? They said, yeah. And I shared a cab with them because I just landed. I was really tired. Mm -hmm. I thought, actually, I just landed safest thing and cheapest thing. Makes sense. To share a cab. Um, As we walked out, there was a line of guys and they all stood there and held up their ID as saying, does anyone need a cab? And they it's had like it. Tinder, the first thing they're showing. But I think that's actually a great thing to do because it gives you confidence. Certain airports you go to, and it's like, does anyone need a cab? And they don't have any idea around their necklace. It's just anything. A they say, oh no, come with me, come with me. No and then you, idea, yeah. they take you into car park, and then you're like, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn around now. Yeah. But the fact that the first thing they did was stand there and have their ID out actually gave me a massive boost of confidence. Yeah. I know. Yeah, you can fake IDs and stuff, but there's an extent you'd have to go to to achieve that. Yeah. And I think we've had a couple of cases before where we nudged each other and be like, yeah, the guy driving. We, we can tell different. we're in an official cab, but the guy driving is different. He's shaved. <laughs> yeah, he's five foot tall. <laughs> but yeah, no, that is definitely quite a big tip for that. So um, for taxis, it's agree on a price beforehand if you can, but also do your research. If you know, right, I'm going from the airport here to here, Online, you might actually be able to get a good gist of roughly how much it should cost. And I think as well, again, why actually it happens in a lot of places. There are apps like Maps.me and other GPS-based map apps that you can actually follow your location. And in lots of countries, if it is meter, they'll just either pretend they don't know where it is or drive in the wrong direction. 
And if you're actually looking at the map and following the map, you can actually direct them and then they will drive you to where you want to go. Exactly. Rather than, t- which happened in Vietnam, it took us 20 minutes to go 200 meters down the road. Really? We had loads of bags and the girls didn't want to uh, <sighs> walk. So we got a taxi or a tuk-tuk and he just minutes. drove around like S shapes and in circles <clears throat> saying he doesn't know where it is. And then we eventually got it up on the maps we found it and it was right next to where we started i think the other thing is if you're solo traveling in particular is do please think about your safety in some of these countries you go to think actually you know what there might be someone in else in the hostel who's going here and just ask about there might be people to go actually no i wasn't thinking about going there but if you're if you're fine with me joining you on today's trip why not go together you also save money that way as well as being safer or or vice versa join join their trips yeah Go and Why not? find other people's planned trips. Like when I hire a car in Europe and stuff, I am almost looking for people in the hostel to go. Right, I'm doing this, this, and this today. Do you want to join me? Because I think for them it saves a load of money. For me, I get company or more company and don't have to deal with my friend as much. Love you too, Morgan. So moving on to our next point is. Our uh, our experiences whilst hiring camper vans, we've had a few. <laughs> yeah. We've had a few. <laughs> I think our first one was we were both upgrades. <clears throat> upgrades was the first one actually. Yeah. Um, I was up in Newcastle at mm-hmm. your graduation, and we were I was just booking... scrolling through. Yeah, and then I just booked it, and I booked our camper van for part of. Did we book Bottom it that when trip. we were sitting at thingies? Yeah. yeah. Um, so I booked it then, and then about half an hour later, I got a phone call saying, oh, I was so sorry, I've just checked all our systems, and we don't have that camp van. So, like, oh, so for no, how a drastic discount, we'll be able to upgrade you for only an extra 110 um, New Zealand dollars, which is roughly 50 pounds. Yeah. But we'll remove about $400. So we suddenly went from a tin can to actually an almost tin brand can. new automatic camp van the problem with that was because it's our first experience ever renting a car actually overseas i think by this point yes yeah neither of us knew how to drive <laughs> this car it was this big camper van it was completely different it was fairly big and it was an automatic and i remember for about the first 25 minutes of driving we got on the main road and i just went morgan this is messed up luckily only we in, only drove i just went seven minutes i was like i'm only in third gear and our revs are near yeah like six thousand and it doesn't sound right and then we pulled over and then played around with them and oh we should have had it in this setting and it would have changed yeah. gears and taking we the handbrake off now yeah. we'd somehow flicked it from automatic to manual like whilst going along and no idea why really bizarre camera. yeah <laughs> yeah so that was the first thing like is sport mode wasn't it when you hire it Hope that you get a phone call offering an upgrade for basically nothing. Yeah, it makes sense. Secondly, as you hire it, ask any dumb thought question possible. So the key things when hiring vehicles and thinking about hiring vehicles is you've got to look at the fuel policy. So the two main different fuel policies are basically one of them is you basically fill it back up to the same level that it was before and another is a prepaid petrol fuel policy. The other key thing to look at is the mileage because some limit mileage. Yeah. And so you kind of want to look for us we always want to look for an unlimited mileage because we don't want to do that. And in Europe you also if you're thinking about crossing borders you have to look about whether you can do that or mm-hmm. or not. Um, I was going to say zones is one thing. So, for example, Australia, certain companies will outright not allow you to take any vehicle over a certain line because they count that as the outback and yeah. they're more likely to ruin the camper van. Mm. On top of that, I'd say look at um, look at everything. So, before you drive away with the vehicle, just say to the person, oh, I'm just going to do a quick video around it because that can save you when on your return of the vehicle. Mm-hmm. If someone tries to make a claim oh, you've damaged this, oh, you've done that. Film and photograph anything you think's damaged and make sure you point that out to the representative who is passing over that vehicle to you at the beginning of the rental. Go, oh, do you know about this dent? Do you know about this scratch? 
do you know this is all looks broken or this is loose mm -hmm. point those out otherwise you could suddenly get random fees and fines later on yeah and i think as well when you're reading the terms and conditions you do need to make sure that you're looking very careful at what coverage they give you even though likely your own insurance will cover a lot but it's it's worth checking then yep. then also just for your own sake and and your cash flow you've got to actually see how much deposit do i need to put down because this was a bad experience for <laughs> this was a bad experience because we well for one rentals jump up a lot in in general if you're under 25 years old some places you like jordan for example you can't rent younger than 25 years old neither in ireland either neither in ireland so there's lots of countries where once you're older than 25 it becomes a lot easier but normally they double the fee yeah for rental so so there's a lot more cost but do you want to go into our little bit of fun with deposits yeah so we had just landed last was it minute NatWest? Or yeah, we, we it was NatWest. Um, sorry, NatWest, I'm calling you out now. But it's all the truth. Uh, we'd landed in Cairns. About an hour to go until the camp van rental place closed. And, yeah, um, turns out that NatWest had completely blocked and deleted my card off the system, which meant I could no because longer access... No, no, no. Was no. I phoned them up and they said... Oh, we don't know why someone has done that. And I just went, how can anyone do that without me calling? And they said they shouldn't be able to, but now it's done. We can't bring back your card. So my main source of money had all of a sudden vanished and I had the money for our deposit of a camper van. Our camper van was probably worth about $300 scrap value at best. <laughs> at literal best, I could buy a nicer vehicle for $300 for that one. They wanted, because of our age... At the time, I think we were 20. Yeah, we were both 20 at this point. Around, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we were 20. Yeah. Um, we were both 20 at this time, and they wanted 2,000 Australian dollars as our deposit. Large. Yeah. Fortunately, the representative looking after us was super patient and was really nice, purely because... I was at university at the point in Bournemouth, which is where he grew up. So we just chatted for ages. Like, mm. guys, I completely understand. I came over here and well, I think stuff doesn't go your way. Fortunately, your brother was awake at 3 a.m. And Ed was awake at 3.30 a.m. or something in the UK. And I contacted him and said, Ed, I know this is ridiculous, but can you send money to, I think it was to your account, um, mm. suddenly in the middle of the night. And he just said, "Yeah, why give not? me two seconds. <laughs> Um, and then it was done. If that hadn't happened and we didn't have that contact at that point, I genuinely don't know what we would have done. Slept. We would have really struggled. Um, yeah, we, we probably would have had to wait until the next day to hire mm. it, which would have just been so we, annoying. We that were, would have me messed up the whole yeah, timeline. That would have messed up a lot of the timeline. But we made it. And that was, as you said, a very different camper van experience from from the first and i one. think if you're trying to do budget holiday to the likes of australia or new zealand do read those terms and conditions find out the yeah. deposit fees if you're a bit older if you're 25 then your deposit's so tiny compared mm. to the rest is do look them up because you might have planned your budget to the absolute t and then you suddenly get there and like by the way we need two thousand australian dollars and to you, cover the deposit yeah. and your budget for your whole trip was two thousand australian dollars and you go but i can't afford it yeah Blah. and you don't want to be in that situation. We were just so fortunate at that point in time that we managed to pull it off. No, and we will do an episode at some point just talking about our experiences in our camper vans and on our trips because I think that would be quite a fun <laughs> episode. Yeah. <laughs> Top tip number one. Make sure Cuddle. The, the cutlery drawer is it's not. <laughs> so on your first journey, you don't just yeet knives and forks across the camper van <laughs> and this shampoo bottle <laughs> fell off the shelf and exploded all over the floor. <laughs> I remember That's you just go, oh, Will, it will be fine. So I'll climb much. back. Keep driving. And I just went, no. Yeah. And you're like, knives no. Knives flying. I'm like ducking. Knives forks flying around just shampoo ready to be an ice rink <laughs> oh but yeah we, we will do an episode talking more in depth about that but that was definitely <laughs> i think 
Now moving on to one of, I think, the most, I'm going to say, underestimated and almost ignorant areas of travel, for especially for that gap gap yard generation. English people only being able to speak English. No. Y- no. <laughs> is is people renting motorbikes across the and likes scooters. of Vietnam? Vietnam. Yeah. Mopeds across the likes of Vietnam, Thailand, yeah, um, the classics. Because they think it's it's not hard to do, but there's so many dangers, both in terms of between just you and the rental people in scams, as well as you are mm. on roads which are so unlike in Western yeah. civilization. So, tr- so travelers die, backpackers die all the time. Uh, in Phong Nha in Vietnam, the hostel that I was staying at, they said every day people come back from scooter crashes and they're either going to hospital, they're doing like trying to do first aid there, but there are lots of crashes. And in these places in Southeast Asia as well, saying that the road rules are completely different. In, there are none. <laughs> in Vietnam, I'll say same in India, it's just hectic. Vietnam, it's not the biggest car wins. It's kind of the loudest car. It's the confidence. And they use honking the horn is basically no one indicates. You honk if you want to turn left. You honk if you want to turn right. You honk if you want to overtake. And it seems in Vietnam that the only rule is is you're only allowed to overtake on corners because... Safest place. Only place safe. It's safe more than um, I definitely had some near misses. I had my first experiences on scooters and I definitely had some near misses coming out and then just someone's on the wrong side round the corner going really fast. Um, But in general, as long as you drive sort of safely and drive not in as least busy areas, which quite often you do, I think that's probably best when you're not as experienced. But the other thing that a lot of travellers do, and this is why the injuries are so much worse, is you just get... And I I didn't do flip-flops, but <laughs> but people are in basically flip-flops. I was in shorts. I was in a tank top at one point. If you crash, you, you just, you're asking for a skin graft. And that's all the safety side of it. When it comes to the scam side, do really blunt things. One get recorded or on camera, you agreeing with the person. So if Morgan was discussing with the person, I would stand there and film it, agreeing how much petrol's in the bike and how much it needs to return with. Video then, straight after that, the bike itself, making sure you take into account any scratches, damages, or any aspect, showing the mileage on the bike and how much fuel is in it. Mm. Because so many times they will come back and be like, no, fuel, you've emptied it, $300. Or you've like, damaged you know, it. Oh damaged my God, you've damaged scooter. it. I need a new bike. I need to get it repainted. You're like, no, no, no. I hand it back. I'm like, no, no, no. Just do it. There are so many scams like this. You you need to take care and when it comes to this. getting take video lots of footage photos. is one of your best things. But sadly, at the same time, there are, and I've heard of many cases of, sadly, police corruption in certain places where they target Western tourists on mopeds and they just fine you or rob yeah. you or both well the fine is robbing because you haven't done anything wrong and in i was told at one hostel in vietnam and i never had came across anything like this but they even said that if the police try and pull you over you should just keep driving because you don't even know that they're police yeah so take care do your research and Use your use your brain, use your instincts. Whatever's in your brain. I haven't got much in here right now, but it use it. Hollow. Yeah. Yeah, you can Yeah, very hollow brain right there. You, you, you can see, you, you can, can see hear yeah. on our audio recording how hollow my brain is. <laughs> there you are. It's like a it's like a board of wood right now. But that's good, it's protective. It is, it is. And I think if any of our audience out there have really, really funny stories mm. to tell us about their transport experiences, I mean, we've still got some other ones, but they're not to do so much with the rental or the hiring yeah. movement because you hire a taxi, you rent the campfire and the bikes. 
I think. I think I'd like to hear them. I'd like people. I'd to like them to hear them. I'd like people to. I, we need to start a hashtag going of hashtag best kept secrets travel funny story. We could do BKS travel story. Yes, BKS hashtag BKS travel story, and we'll find you on Instagram or send them directly to our Instagram, the BKS travel. I think that sounds like a great idea. I think you need to do that right now because we also have other funny transport stories where I've broken down and had to sleep in a, I think a thirty-four seater bus in Africa. We've had the exhaust drop off on that. Oh, I've had yeah. planes where I thought the had wheel was going to drop year. off it. I've flown on five-seater planes throughout Africa in thunderstorms. Ooh. We've had planes where they felt like they're about to drop out of the sky and they suddenly go, and then they keep flying on. We, we've got some Lot, funny experiences. Lots of, lots of travel stories come from the actual travel itself. <laughs> exactly. Shock yeah. horror. The transport in between sometimes is one of the most interesting bits of the whole event. Yeah, unfortunately. I sometimes. had uh, two tyres burst at one time whilst we were in a in a transport vehicle uh, back from a fishing trip. That would that make was, you that jump. That was kind of terrifying. Yeah, that would... That um, would... They just went... And then we looked at them and they were like, hmm, they look almost dodgily yeah. blown out. And then we were on the side of the road in the middle of nowhere. In, um, that was in Indonesia, in the middle of nowhere just stood outside his vehicle and all like the locals started coming around mm. and it got bigger and bigger and you could tell like the family was starting to get uncomfortable with it. Yeah. But then you see all of these crazy things when you're travelling and that's part of the fun of travelling. Part of the fun. You need to experience these things. And you also very much need to subscribe to Best Kept Secrets Travel on YouTube or follow us on the podcast which is Best Kept Secrets Travel on Apple, Castro, Google, Spotify, all podcast platforms overcast and also best kept secrets travel on tiktok and youtube and youtube and because you need to make sure you like subscribe ring that notification bell because you're not just helping our channel grow but you're also helping the trees grow you are as will has explained and we want more trees also, if there are more episodes you'd like to see in the future, really specific or specific countries you want us to do deep dives in, please let us know in the comments below or in a review or just message us on our email, thebkstravel at gmail.com or on Instagram. Let us know because we want to make sure we make the content that you guys enjoy and want to hear. And I hope you've enjoyed this episode and I think now is about time for Will to go to bed and to roll the outro. The outro. Yeah, let's make it happen. I hope that you can handle uh, going on adventures, best kept secret travels. Yeah, all over the globe, having fun, you know the deal. Amazing secret locations, hang out with Morgan and Will. Uh, educating, entertain, haggle in the market, uh, sharing their experiences. Time to get it started. Let's go.